you're watching Democratically Speaking, Mark Lindy, your host. I'm the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and I'm doing this program on my own volunteer time. Today we have a familiar face in Brockton, Brockton's own Mike Brady. Mike, welcome. Thank you for having me today. Good, good to see you. We're uh, just about a week away from the election, and we're going to be airing this right up until. Okay. Um, how are you feeling going into the home stretch? Well, it's been great. No matter where I'm going, whether I'm in, obviously, the city of Brockton, I'm in the towns of Easton or Hanover or Hanson. I'm getting tremendous support everywhere from both Democrats and Republicans, even though we're undemocratically speaking. As you know, we have to work together out there, and I'm getting tremendous support by both sides of the aisle, and that's when you get things done as working collectively. You get the ball moving forward, and you, and you get it past the finish line, and I've had tremendous support all over the district. Now, that's a really important topic, Mike. If you look at what's going on nationally and the gridlock that goes on in Washington, D.C., Massachusetts is a very democratic state, especially with the legislature, whether it be the House or the Senate. The only thing that's not democratic, as we know, is the governor's office, okay? You have always gotten along with people of all parties and independent, Democrat, Republican. Talk about that for a minute. Well, different than what happens in Washington, we do get along. Whether, you know, I'm a Democrat, and I believe in democratic values, supporting the working people, but in order to get some of the legislation passed that we've passed, such as the opiate addiction situation, we've had collective support from uh, bipartisan support across the aisle. And there is common sense Democrats and there's common sense Republicans. I'm sure there are extremists on both ends of the aisle, and, and some of them are out there, but you have to work together to get things done. And that's a fortunate thing on my end. I've been able to build up relationships. Of course, I've got tremendous support within the Democratic Party. As you know, the Democratic State Committee has been supportive of me. All my Democratic colleagues, whether they're from Brockton or Easton, you know, colleagues from Hanson, Josh Cutler. But Josh is another example. He, from Hanson in that area, he, he, he was endorsed by Republicans for Josh Cutler. And I have some of those Republicans who are supporting me on my campaign. And it's helped out tremendously. And I know in life, that's how, you know, the cliche with the Patriots, they don't win with just Tom Brady. They win with a team effort. I've had a great team effort all across the aisle supporting me. In this past weekend, I had over 150 volunteers show up in Brockton that went knocking on doors all over the district. It was one of the best turnouts we've had. The weather was a little cool, but it was good weather. We got through no snow yet, you know, knock on wood. Uh, but it was great support. And I had people not only from Brockton and the surrounding towns, but people came all the way from Oaks Bluff on Martha's Vineyard, came over on the ferry to help out on the campaign, people from the western part of the state, and, and they know how important this election is. And this is why it's so important we get the vote out. Not only in Brockton, and this is an important thing, there's going to be two ballots in Brockton. There's going to be one for the mayor's race, the city council, and the school committee. Then there is a separate ballot just for the special state election. And as you know, it's to fill the seat for my good friend Tommy Kennedy, who passed away back in June. It is a special election, and that's why there was two ballots this coming uh, Tuesday, November 3rd. So we have to remind everybody, this is the most important thing. Obviously, I want their support for Mike Brady, but to grab two ballots when they go into the voting booth, and it's pretty simple. They're just going to check off, you know, for, for the local races and the city elections, but the state ballot for our race for the state Senate seat. Now, you talked about the opiate abuse situation, and you actually sponsored legislation to tell us what you did. Yes, and this is another uh, way we work together. Um, we filed legislation last year that got passed with Governor Patrick uh, and his administration to finally address the issue with the opiate addiction crisis that is affecting too many young people across the board. I don't care if they're from wealthy communities outside of this district, such as Dover or Weston, off from cities such as Brockton and New Bedford. It's affecting too many families. We've had too many people having to suffer because of this. So we finally passed legislation to address it. It was it had bipartisan collective support, but the insurance companies, as we know, pushed back a little bit. They only allowed 14 days in rehabilitation facility, which by far is not enough. Mm -hmm. So I filed a, a piece of legislation to expand upon that. And the most important thing is you need the help afterwards. And even to save taxpayers' dollars, it makes more sense to get a young person help in a facility than to put them in jail where they're not going to get any help, and then they're, they're released on an early release basis, and then they're back out in the streets where these drug dealers are preying upon them. And, you know, we certainly want to put the drug dealers away, but you've got to help out the young people from good, decent families that have suffered, and we've lost too many people across the board, not only from Brockton, but the surrounding towns. Every day we hear tragedies out there, and we, you know, we've helped provide funding for the Narcan to help save these lives, but 
too many families have lost too many good uh, family members to this uh, tragic epidemic that's happening. Now, this seems to be an issue that is a bipartisan issue, that the governor put together an open air task force, yes. that there are Democrats on it. Mayor Carpenter, who's unenrolled, he's on that task force. Correct. I think he's the only mayor on it. And it just looks like everybody's working together on this issue because it does. it's not a party issue. That's it, it, right. it crosses party lines. It's, it's a people issue. Absolutely. It's so important. I've been at some of these hearings that... As you mentioned, that the current governor has put a task force together. I've gone to hearings not only locally in Brockton, but outside in the rest of the district to listen to the residents concerned and, and to bring it to the forefront. And I, I know we are going to continue to work on legislation to protect families out there. We just did a supplemental budget, which had bipartisan support to not only put some funding, but to have proper uh, beds available because the facilities are overcrowded with too many tragedies from too many families. So. We did uh, able to get the sub budget put forth a couple weeks ago. Now, an issue that both you and I are concerned at, you started your career in Brockton as a member of the Brockton School Committee, graduated to the city council, moved over to the state rep, being a state rep, and now you're looking to be a senator. Education is real important to you. I know you're endorsed by both MTA and AFT. Yes, and the Boston Teachers Union as well. I've, I've always had a great working relationship with people in, in education. And as you mentioned, I sat up on the school committee. <coughs> they had a little less gray hairs, and I was probably a little thinner back then. But I've always had a great working relationship with people in education, both locally and at the state level. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've been endorsed by the Mass Teachers. <coughs> Excuse me. Go take a drink. I've been endorsed by the American Federation Teachers because it's so important we get proper funding for our education system. And locally in Brockton, we've done fantastic. There was only one school that was below the state average with test scores, the Huntington School. It's an inner core city school, but working with the local people in education, the teachers in the state were able to get a grant from the state to put a little extended learning time in the classroom, and that school has done tremendous. And the principal, June Saber, who's doing a great job with all the staff down there, they've raised their test scores because of the money that we we're able to get from the state to help out that one school. Every other school is doing fantastic. You know, as we mentioned, when I was on the school committee, then on the city council, we were able to get 90% reimbursement to build five elementary schools. And Brockton uh, gets a lot of support through the Ed Reform Act. But every year we're battling to make sure we get proper funding. We've increased Chapter 70 money, which is state funding for our schools, all across the Commonwealth, ju not just Brockton. And I want to continue to advocate on our education system here and even higher ed, which is so crucial. You know, we have the community college here in Brockton, Massachusetts Community College, which does a tremendous job. We've uh, supported getting the Allied Health Center where the old Christo's restaurant used to be. And these students come from all over the area, not just Brockton. The nursing program alone has had a tremendous waiting list of, of students with perfect grade point averages of 4.0, but there's a waiting list for proper staffing levels in these hospitals. They're, they're working hard to get people in to work in these hospitals. And I've done a lot of work with the nurses out there. That's why I've been endorsed by the Mass Nurses Association as well in SEIU 1199. Our health care workers need the support from our state government to make sure we get funding. And it's a patient safety bill as well. As you know, You know, we've both had parents that were elderly. I've lost my parents a few years ago, and I know you've been in tough situations yourself. And, and it's so crucial that we help support the patients and the people that we represent so when they do get rushed to an emergency room, there's proper staffing levels in the emergency rooms, but also in the intensive care units. So we passed the legislation on the intensive care units. We need to follow up with that with our, with our emergency rooms. And, and, it's, and it's a public safety issue. Now, what would you say to your critics about um, the endorsements? MFA, AFT, Teachers Union, Mass Nurses Association. They've routine, routinely supported you mm -hmm. in the past. I, whenever I get a mailer, I'm, a, I'm full disclosure, I'm an MTA member because I teach over at Massasoit. Sure. You worked at Massasoit before. What do you have to say about that? I, I, me, I think that those are people too. Those are people that work hard and earn yeah. wages. It's not a gravy train for a public employee. Sometimes the wages, I think the contract they're looking at at Massasoit for the next three years is 1.5% over three years. You're mm -hmm. not going to get rich on that. But you're getting criticized. I think, I personally think unfairly, and since it's democratically speaking and I'm volunteering my time, I can say that. But why are you getting hammered from the other side? 
Well, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, these people who are firefighters and police officers and nurses, they're people from our community. We know them. They're our neighbors. They work in our community. And we should have proper staffing levels at public safety, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. We need to increase the public staffing at our police departments, our firefighters. We brought back an engine company over the east side of Brockton several years ago. We're still one engine company short. We need to have proper staffing levels in the hospitals, as I mentioned. So we've worked together on so many issues over the years. They're like uh, our, our close neighbors and friends. And I know what the issues are. I've worked on these issues for many, many years. I try not to get uh, tied up in the criticism out there. There is some outside agencies that aren't even from Massachusetts that are pouring like millions and millions of dollars, not only into my campaign against what I believe in, what our democratic values are, but they're threatening next year to attack all our friends in the legislature for things that we believe in. And it's outside agencies that have their own self-interest. They don't care about you or I or Brocktonians. They care about whether they're going to get a the millionaires are going to get a tax break. That, that you know, one guy wrote a check for $35,000 out of his pocket. <clears throat> I don't know anybody in, in my community here in Brockton that could afford to write $35,000 to a campaign. Uh, you know, I have people that are hot, working hard every day, and I'm appreciative if they can give me a $25 donation to my campaign. And I've had support from all over the district. I'm glad I've got the people who are working, people supporting me. And, and, and I'm proud to, and, and honored to be uh, supported by some of these groups such as the firefighters, the police officers, and the nurses. It's the working people from our community. But, you know, you do have outside agencies because there's different laws that we have in the state compared to the federal government that these outside super PACs can frivolously spend money. And, and you know, the money could be better, better suited helping a community that needs help for housing and improper food to put on the table for a family, never to be wasting on a campaign. My, my opponent spent $71,000 in the primary without having a, a Republican opponent, just attacking what we believe in in our record. And I'm very fortunate. I had tremendous support in the primary election. I took over 88%, not just in Brockton, all over the district. And I'm honored to have that support. But again, I don't take it for granted. I'm out there working every day, meeting with the people, which I've always done, because there is a lot of outside uh, interest that that again, they don't care about what we believe in here in the community. They have their own self-interest. But I try to stay out of that. I try to just focus on meeting with the residents, whether they're from Brockton, whether they're from Hanover or Hanson. Now, I worked with our colleagues, and that's what's about working collectively. Rhonda Nyman, who's a great friend and supporter of myself, she's a former legislator from Hanover. Rob O'Rourke is a selectman in Hanover. They both endorsed my campaigns, but we've worked together on public safety bills at the State House. I've got the local Brockton candidates, uh, whether they're current elected officials or candidates running for some of these open seats or whatever, uh, that have offered tremendous support. I'm getting tremendous support from all walks of life, and that's what it's about, building bridges, working together. And, and I'm fortunate that I've done that already, and I'm looking to do that carrying this, uh, this race to the state senate if I'm successful. But we, a big important thing is we've got to get a big turnout here in Brockton and we've got to make sure that there is no confusion that the people grab two ballots on Election Day to submit to when they're voting. Now, um, you've had support all the way up to the federal level. You had Senator Elizabeth Warren come here. I saw a picture of you with uh, Congressman Lynch the other day, Senator Keating, Congress, I mean, Senator, I keep getting it confused, Senator Markey. I was so used to Congressman Markey. Right. Um, state reps all over the place, Plymouth County officials. Do you think those relationships ultimately will help the district. I know Tommy Kennedy had a great rapport with all those people too. You can follow right in his footsteps. Well, I'm very honored. You know, no, no matter who wins this race, no one's ever going to fill the seat where Tommy Kennedy served. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm very honored to be running for the seat. And uh, we had a great relationship. But he was a great advocate on behalf of our district. And as you know, which you stated, you have to work together. And I've followed suit with Tommy Kennedy, building up relationships with all these elected officials because when we have an issue, we know who to contact. We recently had an issue at the VA hospital in Brockton a couple months ago. There was a bacteria that, that arose from a lady's shower that was hardly ever used. As soon as we got contacted by our veterans, and we, we've been supporting our veterans here locally, and you have to. If it wasn't for the veterans, we wouldn't be able to even have the free conversation we have today on this, on this cable show. But we contacted Congressman Lynch. He was right down here in Brockton, addressed the issue, and it was, it was basically the lack of communication. 
the VA hospital took care of everything with that bacteria. They cleaned the place. They, they changed the shower heads. But the problem was there was a little lack of communication with the people who utilized that building. Once Congressman Lynch came down, we set the record straight. We made sure the administration was going to follow up with the residents who utilized this facility. And that's what it's all about. And, you know, I've been very fortunate at the state level. We passed the Valor Act 1 and 2 and the Welcome Home Bill for our veterans and also at the state level to support the Chapter 115 benefits. And I've had calls from veterans who need help. And we have a great veterans organization here in Brockton at City Hall, but the, when they do need help at the state level, we know who to contact there. And of course, as we mentioned, if it's a federal issue, we can just give a call to Senator Warren or to Congressman Lynch, and we are able to get the job done. Talk about the district. You're a Brockton guy through and through, but like you said, you had relationships with the other representatives in the area district, your colleagues in the House. Um, for whatever reason, people outside of Brockton sometimes don't like Brockton, okay? The district is 75% Brockton, and I guess the other 25% is the district. You've already been part of the district. I know you got a good supporter over in Hanson with Joe O'Sullivan, who's the former teachers union president, right. very active in the MBA. Talk about the rest of the district and how you can unify it and bring it together. Well, I, it's funny you men mentioned Joe O'Sullivan. I had him as an earth science teacher when I was in high school here in Brockton. And, um, you know, I've also built up great relations with all of our elected officials across the district. I've also had relatives in the district, whether my aunt and uncle raised their family in Hanson, my sister lived in Whitman. She raised her children going through the school system in Whitman. My aunt and uncle on, on, on the Brady side were members of the VFW in Whitman. Of course, some of them were from World War II, so they're, they're past are no longer with us. But I've already known the district. I've worked in the district when I was uh, working for Malin News Agency, going paying my way to Massachusetts Community College, working crazy hours early in the morning, sometimes a graveyard shift, which is the third shift, as they say. And... Um, being able to work to pay my own way to, to school. But I've, I've been all over this district. I met with the residents and I've continued to meet with the residents. You know, we, we have a great water source in Brockton with Silver Lake, but though we're able to turn the faucet on here, there may be issues with other communities that the lines go through and you have to be a facilitator to bring these two entities together. And I've already worked with residents from Halifax, from East Bridgewater to try to come up with solutions with, with the other residents from the other communities. And I think that's what helps my whole campaign out. It's what I stand for about bringing people together and working together to get the job done. I'm just doing a time check real quick. We have 10, okay, we have 10 minutes left. Um, senior citizens, you're a regular at the Brockton Council on Aging, and I'm sure you're making the rounds at the different councils on, on aging in the district. Senior citizens vote. They care very much about those issues. Like you said with the veterans, if it wasn't for the veterans, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. If it wasn't for our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers, we wouldn't be here either. Talk about how, what you think you can do for seniors as a state senator. Well, like we all have, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the seniors in, in the district. My parents were from World War II. They passed on. We've had a lot of friends who have of elderly parents that have worked in the district and been here. I go back three generations in, in Brockton with my, my father's side of the family, and then I've had relatives in some of the other towns they mentioned. My mother lived in Rockland. Um, we've done a lot of work, but we can never do enough for our seniors. You know, sometimes they're struggling to put food on the table or deciding to pay for their medicine, and we have to provide proper funding. We've done a great job here with the Council on Aging in Brockton and supporting our high-rises as well, which is so crucial. Anytime any resident from a high-rise calls me, whether it's something as simple as getting a, a door lock checked, I know who to contact within our local housing authority agencies. Some of these other communities need help as well. And uh, we, we, we were able to provide overrides to vetoes from our current governor to provide funding for our senior centers outside of Brockton as well as in Brockton. So that's what it's all about, working together. And, you know, most of the people here in Brockton know me. They know me for years, as you mentioned being their state representative, city councilor, and school committee member, and I'm going to continue to represent the people of Brockton. I'm, never, I'm not going anywhere. I live right down the street here. I, I was fortunate enough to buy a house in the neighborhood that I grew up in. Uh, so I'm always going to be here for the residents, whether I win on November 3rd or not. But working together, you know, the Brockton um, Housing Authority works now with some other communities. They work with the town of Hanson or Whitman, and they want the same representation 
that we've had here and want somebody to advocate on their behalf and I'm going to do that like I've always done. And I've known some of the directors from these other housing authorities. Some lived in Brockton, some moved to other communities, but some still live in Brockton, but we've already had the relationships built up. So when something does arise, you've got that relationship. All you do is you can make that contact, make the phone call to get the job done. Uh, recently there, there was an elevator that wasn't working in one of the high-rises and a resident called me. I made the call to the director, got the staff out there and, and got it fixed. And again, I ask anybody, like I always have, if there is anything that they need from me, they know how to get a hold of me. I even give out my cell phone, which a lot of elected officials don't. I don't disrespect any officials that don't. They say I'm crazy to do that. But I'm always working in the district, so I'm hardly ever home. I'm always helping people out. And even today, there was a fire up the street from my house on Pleasant Street, and I was, I was en route to go to a meeting, but I want to make sure that the residents were safe. A car in a police chase crashed into a neighbor's home. Luckily, nobody got hurt, but the gas company was called because it hit a gas meter there. Luckily, there was nothing too much damage. But our local public safety officials were there, and the biggest thing is making sure nobody was injured. And luckily, with the job of all of us working together, everybody was safe. And I give credit to our firefighters and our ambulance service, our local police that were there, and even the gas company guys who I know personally. I mean, our city council, Tom Monaghan, works for the gas company. We've worked many, many years with a lot of guys from the gas company. They were right on site to make sure that there was no gas leaks. So everything was taken care of. But that's what it's about, working for the residents that you represent. Mike, you're every place. I've watched you in your career, especially as a state representative, and you're tireless. You're, you're a week away from the election. You don't look too worse for the wear right <laughs> now. You're, 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 you're working hard. You're out there pounding doors, talking to people. You're going to bring that work ethic next time around to the Senate. But what are you hearing from the people? You're knocking on doors. You're talking to people. You're doing all these canvases. I know you're not at every single door. You've got kind of an army of people. But what are you hearing? What are the issues that we talked about or anything we didn't talk about? Well, they're hearing a lot of the 90% of the same issues that we have here in Brockton, getting proper funding from the state for road repair, for their public safety uh, departments, you know, the police and the fire, making sure the schools are properly funded, making sure we pass legislation to protect our workers' rights out there. We all work very uh, similarly in, in a lot of these endeavors. Now, there may be some issues outside. Of course, um, as we mentioned, Silver Lake, we get our water that supplies Brockton's water supply here from Silver Lake. There may be issues with the uh, residents of Halifax and Hanson that we draw from the area. Sometimes the water levels are, uh, levels are too high, and then when they're stagnant, that caused a little growth in bacteria. But I've met with the water officials in the Plymouth County Water Board, and it's about bringing them together with our local officials here, which have already contacted our local officials on this, and to get them all at the same table to come up with a common sense solution. And that's what it's about. But I'm getting tremendous support. Everybody out there has heard about the campaign. Uh, what they've heard has been nothing but positive. I'm getting support from both Democrats and Republicans and underrolls and independents. And, and I'm very honored and grateful to have that support. Again, I don't take it for granted, though. There is a few people that, that don't know there's a special election, that don't know here in Brockton there's going to be two ballots. So we're trying to get our message across how important this election is to make sure we have the proper representation at the state house, like we have when Tom Kennedy was here. I want to follow suit with that and just reminding people that in Brockton there's a special election with two ballots. Outside of Brockton, there was only one ballot for the special state election, and we're trying to get as many of our vote out for election day. I don't take anything for granted, so I am knocking on doors continuously, meeting with the residents. I'm going to senior centers, listening to their concerns. They want to make sure we can deliver the goods and have proper representation from the state level, like I've always done. And that's why I think it's been important, working with the elected officials in these other communities. Representative Coulter's endorsed my campaign. Representative Nyman has endorsed my campaign, who worked in Hanover. Now she's doing another job, but she knows the town of Hanover. Represent Claire Cronin, who represents part of Easton and Brockton, they're doing a tremendous job supporting my campaign. But as important as the elected officials, the local people who live in the district, they've known the work I've done. They've seen me out there. They know I know the issues from listening to them and meeting with them. My godfather lives in Easton. I've had tremendous support from these communities. But again, I don't take it for granted. And I can't do it without the great effort of all the volunteers I've had, and, and I'm very honored to do so. 
I think I have about four or five minutes. I just want to ask you one question about education. Going back to the school committee, ed reform started in Brockton. Yes. It was a lawsuit, okay? You were on the school committee. It's been revived a couple of times. City's talking about doing it again. Mm -hmm. The funding formula is going to be looked at. You're going to have to balance the interests of the city of Brockton and the towns. Talk about that for a minute and talk about how you can balance competing interests. You, you talked a little bit about it with Silver Lake mm -hmm. and, you know, having to be the mediator, the referee. Sometimes you need to come out with a referee's uniform and a whistle. Right. Okay, but education is, if you look at like Hanson, Hanson did not pass overrides or debt exclusions to fix their buildings. Brockton was wise enough to do a deseg plan and get the 90% reimbursement. How do you balance that and how do you get everybody on the same page? Well, you brought up a great point. The, the funding in Brockton is a little different because we educate everybody here in Brockton. We have a very diverse community in Brockton. We have people from all walks of life. You can't deny a student a proper education. We have uh, one of the best um, advocacy groups within our school system to educate everybody, whether they're disabled, whether they have certain health situations. You can't deny a child a proper education. We had full day kindergarten long before any other communities ha had gotten full day kindergarten after school programs. I want to continue that work ethic in the rest of the district. I talked to parents in the rest of the district. Some of these parents have to pay for their child's kindergarten or they get a half day kindergarten. I want to work with the elected officials from these towns to make sure they have proper funding. You certainly don't want to ever take away funding that we have in Brockton. We want to continue that because of the large population we have, 97,000 plus. But if I can carry that work ethic from the city of Brockton and help get communities the funding from the state in the towns that are in the rest of the district and balance it out to make sure Brockton gets their proper funding, but work with the elected officials in the other parts of the district to make sure they're properly funded. And again, it's so important, full day kindergarten, early childhood learning, we've done that already here you know, everybody should be offered a full day kindergarten and a proper education. You shouldn't deny anybody a proper education. And I think building up with the relationship we've already had, working together, moving forward, I know we can get it done. Got about a minute. Talk to your voters, talk to your constituents. Why Mike Brady? And if you want to give out the phone number, be my guest. Sure. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching us today and listening to us. Uh, I want to thank you, Mark, for hosting this with the Brockton Community Access. Most of the residents of Brockton know who I am. You know my work ethic. You know where I've come from. I've been born and raised in the community here. I still want to remain in the community and advocate on your behalf. But this is an important election to make sure we have proper rep representation at the state level like it did in the State House. I want to continue to do that in the State Senate. Um, we lost a great friend, Tommy Kennedy, who was one of the greatest advocates and a great mentor to myself. I know nobody's going to fill his shoes. That's why the special election is happening due to his untimely passing. But I want to continue to do that. I'm asking for your vote. In Brockton, there is going to be two ballots. This is very important. We have to have the residents do, submit two ballots, one for the city election and one for the special state election, which I'm on the ballot, Mike Brady. Then in the towns around us, if you have any friends outside of Brockton, there is one special state election, and that is for the state senate seat to fill this vacant seat. Well, Mike, thanks for uh, taking time off the campaign trail. I know you're busy. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll be here on election night. And you've been a regular. You'll probably be at a headquarters, but you can at least call in. Thank you. And okay. I want to uh, thank you for having me today. And I continue. I'll be back. So. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more programs and election coverage on Brock and Community Access. We'll be here on election night, November 3rd. And remember, two ballots. Thanks for joining us.